Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. And now for something completely different. All right, when I get up in the morning, I'm usually pretty exhausted and to get going, I, I really need a good cup of coffee. I've traveled all the way to Mexico to pick my own bean to make that perfect cup of coffee, so I'm pretty invested in the process. So I was pretty intrigued by today's sponsor of Cometeer, who offers a really novel approach to it. So what they do is they flash freeze freshly brewed coffee, offering it to you at peak freshness. So you'll make the hot coffee. You just gotta drop the frozen puck into an empty mug, add six to eight ounces of hot water, and stir. I guess that's it, it's pretty straightforward. Give it a taste. Mmm, that is good coffee. Actually, it reminds me of the coffee I had in Mexico. It's like the first cup of coffee I had. They're like, I see why people like coffee. All right, so now we're gonna make an iced one and just drop it in. And that's it. Join the club and they'll ship it right to your door and save you time by not having to visit the coffee shop. For a limited time, you can get 30% off your first purchase plus free shipping when you use my link. Thank you to Cometeer for sponsoring this episode. Viking bone skates are thought to have originated in what is now southern Finland, where the high prevalence of lakes makes the locomotion a necessity. Some theories suggest that the skate would have saved approximately 10% of expended energy, which would have made the tool extremely valuable. To be able to glide across the ice, the bones were attached to the bottom of Viking-style turn sole shoes using leather thongs. Typically, the metatarsal bones of horses or cattle were used. Horses essentially walk on their toes, and only the third metatarsal fully develops, resulting in a long, flat, rugged bone. The tool has little resemblance to modern ice skates, which use friction to melt and cut ice, but instead relies on the natural oils in the bone to help them glide across the ice. In Olaus Magnus's Historia, published in 1555, there's a woodcut of a hunter on skis along with two skaters. The skaters use a single long pole to propel themselves along. These wooden poles have been found tipped with bone or iron spikes to help propel themselves across the ice. One of the better known examples is a pair found at Burka, which dates to the 9th century. Okay, so the ice skates found at Burka from the 9th century actually used the third metatarsal from a horse. In Minnesota, we don't have any like free Roman horses, but we do have deer. So I'm gonna see if I can track one. And I did just find some tracks. Okay, so you can see that there are multiple deer in this area. It looks like they split this way and this way. So we're gonna go this way and see who we can find. Okay, so he should be around here. All right, let's see. Yeah, I think it looks like he went this way. <laughs> okay, I feel like it's probably pretty close to here. <gasps> okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> hey. All right, so usually we would dress it in the field, but it's pretty cold out, so we're gonna take her right in the studio. <laughs> All right, so this deer we have here might look familiar, not only from outside, if you follow us on Instagram at HTM Everything, and my own personal page is at Laurenapolis, so feel free to follow. Ahem. <laughs> here comes Terry. <laughs> Damn, Terry, where are you going? Where are you going full speed? Hop, oh, Winky's under the table. Hi. We want this to be thin to use like to bind materials and it's a little hard to cut with that. So I'm gonna try to stretch it to make it a little thinner. Nice. Peep the length difference. He's thinking about taking it. Um, <laughs> excuse you. <laughs> Oof. I'm gonna be so buff and tan after this. <laughs> Maybe not tan. Well, I was doing it a little bit too fast and it started smoking, so I think I'm gonna have to slow it down a bit. Oh, yeah, that's very hot. Making the sole, so the simple outline, round in the back, and then the front has a little bit of a point going on to it. I'm very surprised how easy this is. 
do a little Maggie Lisa Simpson hairline line. Very official. Connect. Okay, so we're gonna see what it's gonna look like before we start stitching. So this is going to be on the bottom. It's gonna be like this for warmth. And then you put the foot in. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so comfortable. And then this part, we're gonna have fur in. <laughs> so it's nice and warm. A stitch, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> wow, this is absurdly comfortable. I'm gonna mark what's gonna sew up to what. Boink, boink. Wow. I'll we'll make this side three. One, two, three. Um, we might have to shave some of it. <laughs> Boink. Now we're going to assemble the shoe. And in a typical turn sole shoe, you would sew it with the outside in, sew it up, and then flip it. But since this fur is so thick, I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I am just going to sew it as it will be with the fur on the inside. So this is our all. It did survive the fire, although it is a little charred up. Still works though. Are you liking that? Pretty nice. <laughs> we got a method down. Reindeer hide hole punching is my <laughs> secret talent. Who knew? <sighs> yeah, this is good I made it bigger than my foot because we're gonna lose a lot of room in the shoe due to the fur thickness. In there. Success. And here we have it. <laughs> All right, then line it up with one of these guys. Oh, that's not that hard. Good thing I'm so smart. All right, wow. Secure the first. Done. <laughs> next one. To the next one. Damn. Oh, these bad boys. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to sweep later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dobby, you wanna check them out? What the heck? Yeah, what pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty great. <laughs> Since we have such soft metal tools, cutting bone would be very frustrating and harm our tools. So instead, we're going the sandstone route. There will be bone dust, and when grinding against stone, there'll be stone dust. So it's important to use some water, get it on there, and just create like a slurry. But since we are inside, I am going to be wearing a mask. Oh yeah. So you can see that it's working. The bone is getting flat, but also, the water's catching the bone dust. Very exciting, very good. Shout out my dude Jim from Instagram who gave me this tip that is working extremely well. <laughs> All right, people flat it's getting. Pretty flat. All right, so this side I got it pretty flat and I don't want to overdo it. So we're gonna switch to get this guy off. Don't love that. Smells good. Does it? This rock is working perfectly. So in order to secure it to the boot, we need to put the lashing through the bone. We're gonna heat up the awl and just poke the hole right through the bone. And by we, I mean Andy. about to be uh, even better with the accessory of the year. Uh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get the tine off the antler so we can shove it in the stick. Gonna hope to do it right so I don't have to do it again. Ooh, I was right on, but it did not go all the way. Whoa! <laughs> 
Dang it. Okay, here's the part we don't want. What got away is what I do want. But for some reason, I broke in two spots. Yeesh, I broke the axe. So we're gonna switch this sponsor axe. Hey! Okay, I'm not very <laughs> accurate. Ugh. So we have some wax and pine rosin here and we are gonna put it in the fire and so it'll melt together and make some caveman glue. The stuff in the pot is too soupy, it's too hot, but when it cools down a bit, it's like very glue-like. If only I had a furrier pair of boots. <laughs> That's a good setup for the boots later. <laughs> I'm gonna just cut this out. Watch your hand. I'm gonna tear out the middle of this guy. Okay. Nestle this guy in there, cover it with the glue, wrap it with the hide. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna take our bone and put the lashings through and hopefully secure it to the boot. Nice. So in order to make sure that my foot is actually on this so it's usable, I am going to <laughs> put the boot on and feel, okay, that's in the middle. Secure that and then we'll go over the top. Okay, this side is <laughs> very furry and it is hard to feel. Then we'll do the second one. <laughs> Dang it. I need something to push it through. Fashion. Dang, that's nice. So feel it in the middle. <laughs> Tie a nice bow. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get out of here. It's gone. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oops. <laughs> okay. That one was too close to the sun. It's craftsmanship. Please look it up. Up to that. Oh, these? <laughs> Heck yeah. It's going to work. Mm -hmm. What's up? <laughs> all right, so got the skates out. You saw how good I was at my real skates. So got them all suited up, laced up, out on the ice. Gonna see if it works. We're gonna go for it. Check the kicks. Sports. Cool. hi <laughs> proud of myself. You know what? They worked pretty well. Not as good as my regular skating, but <laughs> I think that's because they kind of go side to side too. Kind of threw me off a little bit and this wind definitely didn't help. But I think this is one of our more successful builds. Cool. And I definitely think if I was in a hunting situation, they would save me some energy. Okay, so some future episodes that we have coming up, we're really excited about. We're gonna do some Greek fire, a little bit warmer than this episode. We are also going to be doing things like bubble gum and Hot air balloon. A hot air balloon. So yeah, a lot of fire, I guess. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned and uh, so. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> so be sure to support us on Patreon. All right, I'm just waiting for these people to, you know, maybe invite me to play on their pickup team. <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't. <laughs> goal. <laughs>you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics also if you've enjoyed these series consider supporting us on patreon we are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going thanks for watching 